Ben and welcome to my vlog. When I came to paint my sign I thought it would be really cool to make it look about 60 years old, you know, retro, vintage, not polished and modern. So I thought it'd be really cool as well to have some rust on it. After doing a bit of research I couldn't really find what I was looking for and then I found an eBay listing and I thought now then this is interesting. So this is what this video is all about. I'd just like to say quickly before we crack on with the video, this video has only been made possible with help from Chris Cadle from Outline Displays to help me build this wonderful genuine neon sign. Chris's contact details are in the video description. I hope you really enjoy this video. This is certainly tough enough now to do something with because I used fast activator and it's had about 12 hours to cure in a reasonable sort of temperature. The basic colour of the sign is going to be like a turquoise colour, which looks nothing like that looking at my screen. What you're looking at probably isn't a good representation. So this is where I got the paint from. So this is the colour, no affiliation to this company whatsoever, but fair's fair. People are going to want to know where I got this from. I think it came in at around about 24 quid for a litre of 2K. So that's just direct gloss. Just activate it, spray it on and it just comes out glossy. No need to lacquer it, although you can if you want to. So that's that dealt with. What I've done here is I've actually tinted it with some white paint that I've got. I'll just show you that quickly. This is the paint I used to actually paint the sign white and then what I've done is I've mixed it with the turquoise to see if the two are compatible and they mix together. Okay, yeah, I might have problems with other things like, you know, they won't harden, but I've hardened them and they harden absolutely fine. Good enough for this job, I'm happy. It ain't going on a real valuable car or anything like that. What I've done, you see, is I've mixed the two together to tint it because I want to do it so that it's faded because what you see on a lot of old cars, on a, on a lot of old things that have been painted, on the top, very often where the sun's been, they've bleached almost white so what I want to do is I want to sort of graduate the paint down so it's bleached out on the top and um, all the way down to the bottom so underneath the sign I'll have that pure sort of dark turquoise colour. Man that looks nothing like that, that really is a lot greener believe me and um, fading all the way up to the white on the top and then on the top of the sign it's a kind of on the crest of the sign, I suppose you could call it, at the top, where the sun would be hammering down its hardest, I want to put this rusted paint effect. Again, I bought this off eBay, off another company. I'll show you who the company are, but I sort of thought I'd show you how it comes. Quite well packaged, really. I was quite impressed when this came. So you get like a spray bottle. I mean, they've even masked that over there to stop that from getting damaged. They, they've gone to some trouble, fair play. Comes with a little key ring. I'd just like to say huge thanks to everyone that's made a donation or bought a hammer because it's you guys that have helped me purchase this. Without your help, I wouldn't be able to buy this stuff. So I've got something else in here. Oh, that's the hardener. That's the hardener for the paint. So yeah, it is two pack paint. I did read that and I took that in. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to research this properly to make sure I apply it properly. I don't want to just haphazardly paint it, hope for the best. Do what they say, and then if it's a load of rubbish, um, we know it's we know it's the product and not me because you know it's all very well slating a product. Um, but then people apply stuff wrong, don't they? Do it wrong and then they say it's a product's fault, and it's their fault all the way along. Nothing else in the box, so that's it. There are instructions on the can. I did read earlier that it said that they got a website to go up and check them out um, to get even more you know, information on how to use the product. So that's what I'm going to do now. But the reason I picked this product is because I did read a few bits and pieces and a few people did recommend this paint because I mean I've seen a lot of people do uh, rusty sort of effects and what a lot of people have done is they've just sprayed stuff brown and then they painted the 
the colour they want it to be over the top and then they've rubbed it through so that it just looks brown underneath but it doesn't really look authentically rusty and this stuff actually is real rust so that's why I wanted to use this product. I'll talk through my understanding of what I've just watched. I've been to the website of the company that make the paint and ironically <laughs> It took me straight to YouTube videos. It's a bit disappointing really that when I was researching rusty sort of paint effects, um, I wasn't kind of directed to their videos. I was watching other ones that weren't that relevant really. Anyway, I watched their YouTube videos and my assumptions on how to use the product, um, I think I'd second guessed quite well um, everything they said. Um, the only thing, I mean, I don't know the product, I don't know what it's made out of or anything like that. The only thing that I sort of frowned about a little bit myself was they made quite a few references about it can be applied to any surface, including bare steel, without any primer whatsoever. I just wonder how well it actually sticks to bare steel. You know, how well does it actually stick unless it's got like similar etching properties to etch primer or, um, you know, like mechanical bonding properties like epoxy. I don't know. Of course, I've gone completely overboard with this. I mean, this looks, this looks far too finished off for the product. In the practical videos that the guy's done on his YouTube videos, what they've done is they got a, a fantastic sort of 32 Ford or something. It's a um, fiberglass kit car basically. So it's a fiberglass shell and they've just literally 240 buzzed down with DA on the gel coat and then just whop the paint straight on the top of that, which I can see, yeah, that's gonna be absolutely fine. That'll stick to that really, really well. I'm gonna peel off that. And of course, fiberglass isn't gonna rust, is it, in any way. So they got this rusty effect paint on the top and it's almost kind of like the way they've applied it. It's almost like, well, the rougher the better. In fact, they've even got stuff that you can add to it to make it look even more grainy, um, which looks fantastic when you've got some ink rusting and it's grainy as well, sort of adds that authenticity that it really is something that's going rusty, you know? And that kit car certainly looks more like uh, it's been made out of steel because of the rust effects that are on it. It really does look very, very good. But of course, it's extremely rough. And this sign is very sort of smooth and polished. So it kind of goes against the grain a little bit. I mean, my whole career, I've gone from making things look rough into making something that looks extremely polished and finished off. My slight concern is, especially with this sign, is I wonder how flat it's actually going to be when I paint, when I put the paint over the top. Is the paint over the top going to lie flat on it? Because I'd like like it to have. And I am going for a slightly less distressed look than their fiberglass hot rod. And yeah, well, let's we'll see, won't we? So anyway, I'm going to shut up. I'm going to get back to the practical side of things. So that's going to be the center of the top tube. I reckon if I mask it along there, then that'll give me some degree of a soft edge to where the paint's gonna finish. The soft that edge that along there, and then bring it around and go through the center of these holes here. Okay, if I bring it down there like that, then I've got this, I've got this center section 
we can't get any of that overspray on it. If I take it round here, the same, in theory, I'm not going to get a real hard edge if I just sort of spray along there. So I want the rust to be on this on this top edge. I don't mind how much goes over the top. I might just sort of paint that all with the rust effect paint. I may make it rusty around that hole because this is the lower tube, so there'll be a tube along here. And um, obviously this is going to be sign written along here, so this is going to say Trev's blog along here. And I didn't really want to corrupt that sign writing. So I could just do like a rusty effect around there as though the rust's gotten into that area and then it won't affect the sign writing either. I could do it up here, of course, but then the problem is it's going to cut through the lettering again. That's going to make it more awkward. It's going to make it more work. So I reckon I might just put like a, a big rusty splodge around there. I've only got to go sort of down to the bottom now, haven't I? What I might do as well is I might just, with a brush, put a few bits in as though it's been chipped at some stage and it's gone rusty. It's really difficult to know how carried away to get. So it's to really, really stir this because it's quite a nice. It's good. I mean, it it looks like rust anyway. I mean, it's a good colour. This stuff because it it looks rusty anyway. I mean, they've obviously thought about their base colour because the pigment and the resins are going to be holding it all together. And if that doesn't look like rust then it's not going to work. Let's give it a really good stir. Oh, so heavy this stuff. So so heavy. Hasn't really got the texture of paint. It's quite fine though, I thought it would be a little bit coarser than it is, which is a bit of a relief. But it does seem extremely thick. I'm wondering if it will go through the gun. I got an old Sealy with a 2.2 air cap, which is for spraying extremely thick paints. I think what I'll do is I'll use this next to apply this paint. too bad actually obviously it is quite a textured kind of finish but it's smoother than I kind of expected it to go on so it's got quite a sort of almost smooth stone chipped appearance but more smooth than stone chip if you know what I'm saying so the coverage isn't too bad either. I managed to get a good couple of coats along this edge, which is really all I'm after. I don't want to go all the way to this back edge. So if I can sun that down in some sort of fashion here, flat enough to accept the 
top coat, then I'll be very, very happy. Uh, it doesn't even matter if I flat through it there because, of course, you know, it's going to be covered in paint anyway. It's just this front face that I don't want to sun through if I can possibly help it. But I did manage to get some decent coats along there. I'm just so pleased that it's covered. Uh, you wouldn't be able to do that much with that tin. I probably wouldn't be able to paint that whole sign with one tin, if you see what I'm saying, because I've used half just to do, I don't know, I mean, what would that be? I mean, that would be probably getting on for half of the sign, I suppose, because we have gone round the edge and we have gone round some of the front face. So it's probably approaching half the sign, but I doubt whether you do the whole sign in one tin. I just think you'd be struggling to do that. And that was a 250 mil quantity. That's with the hardener added as well, to so sort of give you an idea of the coverage. This is the next day, and let's have a good look at what I've done. This is very rough to the touch. It's got a few lumps in it. I didn't strain the paint, A, because it was so thick it probably wouldn't have gone through the strainer, and B, because it's got all that metal in it, and I didn't want to filter any of that out. So I just put it straight through the gun. I really don't think it matters because the manufacturer says to rub it down now with 240 to start with, so something quite coarse, 240, 320, and then go through a, a process of using uh, scotch bright pads to kind of buff away any of the paint to reveal as much of the metal to the surface as possible. What I did is I masked it along there, of course, because I've got a tube running all the way along there, and I'm actually going to put some red sign writing along there also. So if I've got a bit of a line and I can't feather that edge out, it doesn't matter because I'll have a hard line going all the way along there and you won't see it. This side I'll have to try and feather that out as best I can, but it is quite nicely feathered. If you can see, I used uh, soft edge masking tape along there, so I haven't got too much build there. I'm wondering how well it's actually going to feather out because it's got the metal in it. I don't know, but it's all a learning experience, isn't it? That's what this is all about. I've got my my sort of chips, my bits where it's paint's been chipped and the rust will be coming through from underneath, and also where it'll have failed around this fitting. These got sort of 25 mil fittings that push into there, so I thought I'd put some rust around there as well sort of did it as if the rust had come out and then started creeping along the edge of the sign. I don't know whether you can see that, but it is extremely high, that paint. I purposely did that so that I'll try and leave that build there so that when I flap the paint down, I'll wear straight through into the rusty paint product and that'll stick out proud as if rust is actually bursting out from behind the paint. That was the point of that. So let's get on and rub this down and make it look rusty. It's quite a good colour anyways. I quite like the base colour. If we consider something that is already rusty, which isn't too far from here, these beans, it's going to be my press. So you can see the colour there, the base colour. Very, very similar. You've got that bit of bluey paint going on there. I love that. I love that sort of bluey paint and rust mixed together. What a fantastic combination. Then we've got the, the orangeness of the rust, which is what this paint product is supposed to recreate so it actually looks authentically rusty and not just like rust coloured paint. So the sanding procedure 240, 320 followed by scotch. They use green, I haven't got any green, I've got red. Red's pretty close to green, I would have thought. I've actually never used green, I've only ever used red and gray, but I think the green 
is a little bit more severe than the red. Let's see if it does job. So 241st, let's just see what happens. I take the top off, I guess I'm trying to just get it smooth. I really want it as smooth as I can where the paint's going to go over the top because I don't want it really textured, otherwise it's gonna look like there's something underneath. You know, I, I, we don't want it to look like what it is. We want it to look like natural rust. So the flatter it lies where I'm not gonna break through, the better. Seems to, seems to sun down okay. Yeah, that's not too bad, is it? That's quite quick. I didn't know, you see, because of the metal particles in there, I didn't know whether it just completely resist rubbing down altogether because of those metal particles in it. I don't know how easy it would be to rub through to the other side, and I don't want to do that along here. I don't mind if I rub through up here. I don't care at all, but along this edge, I'd like to try and keep it intact. If I do rub through, I'm just going to touch it in with a brush. Uh, now I can see the nature of the product. I can see why they say roller it on. And um, yeah, that 2.2 .2 air cap though on that gun, that was an SSG501 by the way, which is made by Sealy. And 2.2 .2 air cap in that. So for anybody that does actually want to paint spray on, I prefer to spray things because I'm more used to doing that than rolling things. And you are going to get a more even finish, I would have said spraying, but certainly you need a bigger air cap than a standard spray gun. I can't see it coming out with if you were using a top coat gun, you know, B2 too fine it wouldn't it just wouldn't come through this air cap so that's 240 that's still a little bit grainy I was just gonna do a quick demo for you rather than showing you the whole thing so I would have said that's flat I wonder if you could use 120 sorry 180 well I wouldn't use 120 Maybe 180 would you could still possibly. I don't know whether that would be a bit too rough though. So 320 over the top. I'll just do this bit here. And then Scotch Bright over the top of that. Ah, it's changing. Look at that. So it's going from the kind of red colour to more of a steel grey, which is quite interesting. I guess what the scotch is doing is the particles must be standing up like that. So the particles are standing up and they're coming out the paint. And so you're rubbing down on top of those steel particles, you're rubbing away the base layer so that the actual paint product itself is being worn down until you get to those metal particles then those metal particles must resist rubbing down any further and then you can't really go much further unless you break through I suppose but then when you scotch it the scotch because it's not a dead flat product and it'll go in between it must be rubbing away at the pigment and the resin around those metal particles allowing more metal to stick out actually rubbing the paint product around the steel particles so that more of the steel particles are exposed to the elements which is what we want interesting very interesting there you go there you have it and that is quite smooth now I would have said that that's acceptable to be able to lay some direct gloss on the top of that and get it quite flat. So I'm gonna do the rest of the sign. I won't show it all, a bit pointless really. And then we'll get some paint on this.
Beautiful. No problems feathering it out whatsoever. Rather than rub this down with paper, I'm just going to go straight for the scotch on this because I want as much as this to stand out as possible and if I start rubbing it down with the paper I'm going to lose all that texture. The guy that was doing the demonstration in his YouTube video, the chap that actually sells this stuff, he had an additional product that he sells, don't know anything about it, but he was sprinkling that in to give more of a 3D effect. Uh, and it did seem to work what he was doing when, when he shows it in his demonstration, it, it really does stand out proud. There's certainly plenty of texture there and I'm gonna have no problem at all when I come to paint, because I'm just gonna paint straight over the top of this and then I'm gonna highlight it by then rubbing it down. So I want as much depth, or height I should say, not depth, to this product as possible so that it'll easily just instantly rub straight through into the rusty paint product. Um, if I rub this down flat and I wanted to then reach it, I may flat through into the base coat. And the last thing we want is white to be showing around here. I want it just to go from turquoise to rust. It does seem to be maintaining its texture while turning the silvery grey colour it needs to be to show that all those metal particles are indeed exposed. Got all the sanding of the rusty paint done. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to DA down up to here. So basically anything that's white and where the feather edge is, I'm going to DA with a 500 disc just to make sure I take out any of those scratches. Because the last thing I want when I'm doing the final rub down, when I'm sort of breaking through the top coat into the rusty paint product, I didn't really want there to be any real harsh rubbing down lines that some of the paint could sit in. I think it might spoil the effect a little bit. The effect I'm after anyway, which is, I'm not really, really going for that real gritty look. I just want it to sort of look a bit sort of more subtle. All the greased and ready to simply put the paint on. Simply put the paint on. I suppose you've got to remain positive in these situations. I've got the paint mixed up, so I've got the turquoise, which looks like blue, <laughs> but it's actually turquoise, and I've got the white. The white's a very, almost kind of blue shade of white anyway. It's very harsh, this white. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tip some of the turquoise into the white to tint it, so it's a little bit more like the sign color, but I want it to almost look like it's washed out white on the top of the sign where the sun would have bleached it. So what I'll probably do is I'll just stick my stick in there so I can see the difference. And I'm just going to put a tiny amount. I'm not just going to throw loads in. Great anecdotal story I could tell you now, but I won't. But here we go. Just put a little bit in. We just want to tint that white so that it doesn't look too contrasting to the green. Good grief, I only had to put a tiny little spot in you, see what a difference that has made. Wow, I'll do. I'll just show you the difference on the stick. See the difference? That is probably going to look white against the turquoise. I get a bit of turquoise on there. 
see but it is closer to the white I think the white's just too far away so I just wanted to tint it so I've tinted it now let's go and put some paint on the sign um, like I said this will just go over the rusty part first just to make it look like it's been bleached out by the sun of the white on I actually mixed a little bit more white up to make it whiter because it was a little bit too green for my liking and I don't know whether you can see it on camera but there is a slight line along there where you can still see the edge of the rusty product but you can't see it here where it really counts so if I was to do it again, I would probably not have bothered masking it along there. I would have probably just let it fade out naturally, perhaps masked it further down here and then left a good amount of overspray coming out to use as the fade out. And I know for a fact that I would have got rid of it very successfully then. What I've also done is I've got a little bit of thinners on a cloth and I just took that white paint off that had settled on there, the overspray. I think it was just worth it just to get that white paint off that because what I want to do is when I rub it down, when it's just turquoise, I don't really want it going white on the rusty part there. I don't mind it at the top because I want to make it look like it's faded at the top. That's the point of it being faded at the top and then blue or well, turquoise at the bottom. If you hadn't guessed it already, what I'm literally going to do is just keep tinting this with that. So I'm going to probably do another, I might just put that on now. So I might just put that on and that'll give us a, a slightly darker shade of that. And then what I'll probably do is tint that again and make more of a kind of peppermint green uh, and then put that on before I end up with the turquoise at the end. It doesn't look anything like what it's going to look like when it's finished. Of course, I've still got a lot of sanding processes to go and sign writing and all the rest of it, but I wanted that white bleached out look at the top of the sign, which will continue on into the front of the sign, but I've got to sand that down. I took the paint all the way up across the front, so I thought it would be far easier to rub it down to gain the effect I want rather than trying to spray it to a line. So that's why I did that like that. Got some 240 here. I'll go with that first. Tread carefully. Start with. And 
and progressively go up the grades to finer and finer because I want a load of scratch marks in this. Oh man, this is taking way too long. Even for me, I think it's time to crack the DA out. The changes I think I'd make if I was to do it again, which is kind of on the cards because I enjoy this kind of thing. What I would do is I would do it the white by just use the two colours, so I do it the tinted white. I'd paint that on, then I would flat that down. So I'd allow that to dry and flat it down so it's completely smooth. And then I would find a lacquer that was compatible with the turquoise, and I'd tint a lacquer, and I would keep on layering up coats of paint so that the paint was extremely transparent with a very very good film thickness which would mean that you would be able to sand it down and get a more graduated effect. Because I've been sanding the sign down with some quite coarse grits and ended up at 320 it's still going to be a little bit rough to just go straight into the polishing sanding process it's going to leave some deep scratches behind. So I'm going to try and do is take some of those out first. I've got some 400 wet and dry, 600 wet and dry, 800 wet and dry, and then I'm going to start going into the dry sanding. So I've got 1,000, 1,200, 1,500, and end up with a Trizac disc. I use a soft interface pad when I'm DAing it down. On the polishing sides to try and prevent going through on the corners, see how it turns out. I'm going to have to go on a shopping spree if I start doing any more paint work because I am really using the dregs of what I've got left over now. Hopefully you can see the texture of the paint in the light. I'm going to start by simply going around with some 800 wet and dry. We're going to be very careful to not sand onto the turquoise. Just literally a tiny little piece like that. And then just sand around. A bit of 800 grit to start with just to knock any bits of grit off, get the heads off those really quickly. And I can also use the 800 as well on the edges where I want to just thin it right out. So I just keep going like that on the edges. Try and get that paint thinner and thinner. Now that's drying off, I really like that because it really is looking very oxidized now. I've just rubbed that down. And in fact, what I'm going to do next is I was going to go down the grades a bit more with the wet and dry but I think I'm going to lose some of the texture that I've still got from the brush marks because I didn't want to completely remove all of those. What you can do you see is utilize the brush marks also because it is brush marks where you've got the thicker bits of paint when you rub it down that's going to hang on for dear life but then in the troughs of the brush marks you're going to wear through and you're going to see it thinning out which is a very desirable look i think it all depends on what you want you see you've just got to 
change your methods to suit what you want your outcome to look like. I think I'm going to stop at that and I think I'm going to go back to the mechanical polishing processes now. So I'm just going to use um, probably a 1500 disc, just flash over that really quickly, dry sanding disc, the film discs, and um, then go over the Trizax 3000 over the whole thing to try and give it that dull nitrocellulose sheen. So that's all sanded down with the 1500 dry. Next stage is going to be the 3000 Trizact. Got me DA, I've actually taken off the soft interface pad. You can use it with and you can use it without. So for this I'm gonna use it without. You use this wet, so I've got water sprayer. And this is going to be the polishing process. So I'm not going to polish this time. I want it to look as flat as possible, but I want it to have that kind of mid sort of sheen as if it was highly polished once upon a time, but it's literally just been baked in the sun and it's oxidized. So it's still, it's still gonna look flat, but not shiny flat. So let's get the panel well wet. And a disc, and just go. So now that the sign's all finished, I'm going to turn my attention to the rust effect paint again. So what I'm going to do is scotch it over again because I've noticed that as I've been rubbing it down it's been going like a ready brown colour again so I just want to scotch it so that we can bring all those metal filings to the surface You get this little bottle, spray bottle, and you get this rather suspicious looking package of activator. So you've got to put a tablespoonful of this in some water, give it a good shake, and then just literally spray it on and leave it. Apparently not a huge amount happens on the first application, so might not see much change. So I won't panic till I let this dry out. So you gotta let this dry and then go again. So let's see what happens. Second application.
video, I neglected to say that after I painted the rusty paint on, I had some left in the bottom of the pot and I got a brush and I brushed it on some steel that I'd sanded down and I left it about a week so it was uh, really cured and then I attacked it with a sharpened wood chisel and I can tell you something for nothing that stuff is stuck on there like <laughs> to a blanket so certainly no worries about its adhesion properties there. Also you can watch some proper tutorials on how to use the stuff on their own channel and I'll put a link in the video description to that one so you can watch that. Also Matt Urch used it to paint his bike and I'll stick a link in the video description to that one. Also just like to say before I wrap this video up I'm going to be giving this product away on my Instagram account. You can follow me on Instagram I'll put a link in the video description as well to that, so you can follow me on there, and I'll also be giving away this. A couple of these RustyPaint.com key rings. A signed copy of Max Stockin's first CD. A couple of Trev's Blog's toolbox stickers. An Extreme Plasma Merc from Extreme Engineering. An Artec Welding Consumables Merc. And last but not least, a Trev's Blog panel hammer. I will put a post about this prize draw on my Instagram account shortly. And all you've got to do is simply comment on that post to be in with a chance of winning all of these products. Good luck. So in the next video, we're going to head on over to Outline Displays Workshop and watch them build this amazing sign, do all the glass blowing, put the gas in, show you everything. So I'm sure some of you are going to be really interested in watching that and it's great to keep something from the past alive, isn't it? Until then, I will leave you with the great sounds of Max Stocking and I will say, bye for now.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.